Running injuries are a part of the sport, and that's okay. And if we admit we have them, and we're willing to understand why they happened in the first place, and what we can do individually, those running injuries aren't going to be as big a deal. All right, welcome to the first episode of the Run DNA podcast. We're really excited to have some conversations with runners and the professionals that help them. And I think this is a really important one to start off with, why running injuries happen. And the way that I'll explain this to a lot of patients is telling them, if you want to take control of your relationship with running, this talk, this episode that we're going to do here is going to help you understand why running injuries happen. Because when you know the cause and you're aware of the most common reasons why you're getting injured, you can get and stay ahead of running injuries. Because running is great. I love running. I always say if you put the benefits of running into a pill, everyone would want to take that pill. But the FDA would never approve that pill because there's so many side effects and there's so much high risk of musculoskeletal injuries. So we want to help you understand why these injuries happen first, because if you understand it, then you can help get ahead of it. And then a lot of the other episodes are going to talk more about the nuance of why specific running injuries happen or what specific intervention can do to help reduce injuries or boost performance here. So what we're talking about today isn't really specific to one injury, but all running injuries. And if you've ever had a running injury, this is going to be a key episode for you. If you've never had a running injury, uh, you should understand why so that you can continue to be in that very small minority of runners. And if you've never had an injury, please let us know. We'd love to study you and see what you're doing right and learn all about this. So if you have leave a comment for sure so that we can reach out and talk to you because most runners do have injuries. It's upwards of 82% of runners get injured every year with half of runners injured at any given time. I think to start, it would be good to talk about two different runners and share their stories a bit and see if we can find the commonality between the two different runners. So the first runner that we're going to talk about, these are actually real runners. This is John. John uh, is a 43-year-old male. He is training for his fourth marathon, uh, really gung-ho about running, got into it. He wants to get a faster Boston qualifier or BQ. He got one but we know that there's that elusive time that you can qualify for Boston, but how do you actually get into it? You have to qualify even faster. So he started having some knee injuries in the past, but at six weeks before his most recent marathon, he started having pain on the front, kind of outside of his right ankle after doing a speed workout and a newer version of the super shoes that he's going to race in. He had been able to maintain 45 plus miles per week without injuries for about 10 weeks leading up to this. So he was on a 16 week program, six weeks left is when he got injured. Um, His previous marathon plan had averaged 25 to 30 miles per week. So we've got runner one and injury number one. Runner two, injury number two, is Sarah, who's training for her first 5K in over a year. She's been running three times a week for four weeks. The day after a 40-minute run, she started to get pain in her right lower back. She said she needs new shoes, admitted that, and states that she runs primarily on the same side of the road here. These are both true stories, like we were saying. If you asked a physical therapist, an athletic trainer, a physician about their theory of why this person got injured, you're going to get a lot of unique stories about why these injuries occurred. Some might say that John couldn't handle the increased mileage. Going from 25 to 30 miles a week up to 45 is a big jump. Or maybe you could say Sarah was ramping up too fast. She hadn't been running for a long time, and she went to running three times a week, and she was doing a 40-minute run, and maybe she was ramping up. Other people might say that it was John's new shoes or Sarah's old shoes that contributed to it and that he shouldn't have done speed work in a new pair of shoes and should have broke them in a little bit more or Sarah shouldn't try to get so many miles out of it and should have gotten new shoes. That could be another theory. There will also be other people that tell you it depends and we need more info. And admittedly, it does, right? We gave you a small snippet of this. Don't want to bore you with all the details. And there's a lot more that we get clinically out of it. And I think that we could say that it depends is probably the right answer here. But I want you to take a step back and think about how you could relate the two injuries. Behind any running-related injury is really one basic truth. 
Running injuries happen when the stress of running exceeds a runner's ability to absorb it for long enough that some structure becomes damaged. So basically, simply saying is that when we run, we have a certain capacity for stress. When it is too high or too long or too fast, then a structure might break down. I 100% acknowledge that's a pretty big generalization, right? It's it's kind of a little bit of a cop out, like, well, why did you get injured running? The stress was higher than you could handle. But it's true. And we can dive deeper into that and give a lot more context about why all running injuries happen and how we can have some general theory and knowledge that's going to help every runner and every professional that is looking to work with runners, how we can get ahead of some of these running injuries. So some of the trouble on the science side is that there's really a lack of consensus of how to define a running injury. So first, I think it's important that we talk about why the what, what do we constitute as a running injury? Um, do And there's some questions that we should ask for this. Do you have to not be able to run for it to be an injury? Does it have to be a certain amount of pain, uh, five out of 10? Or does it have to last for a certain amount of time that you have pain for three or four days? Do you have to see a medical professional for it to be considered injury? And the way I define running injury is really any pain or physical limitation that pre- prevents you from your preferred participation in running. And this can really be a wide range of people. This could be somebody who says, I want to run 10 miles today, but I'm only going to run eight because after a little bit, I start to feel some pain on the outside of my knee. In my mind, that's a running injury. And the reason I use such a liberal definition is because in my career, I've seen that the slightest injury can turn a lot worse with seemingly little participation. So we talked about somebody that's just reducing their long run, but there's an injury could also be anybody that's in a boot for eight weeks or that is sidelined for a long time because of an injury, a tear, a tendinopathy. There's lots of reasons that people could have these injuries. So in my opinion, it's better that we're more inclusive of what it means to be injured so that people act quickly and make making even a tiny effort by acknowledging that you have a running injury could go a long way in preventing it from blowing up in your face. And we'll talk a little bit more on prevention and strategies around that. So again, I think it's really important that we're willing to admit when we're injured. And I'm a runner myself. And yes, I treat a lot of injuries, so I get a lot of exposure to this. I think one of the issues that we have in the running community is a lack of willingness to admit I'm injured, that I have pain. That And because of this definition being fairly liberal, it doesn't mean that you have an injury that you have to stop. Because we joke around when we teach courses, we teach a lot of physical therapists, athletic trainers, physicians, how to, how to treat runners. And we always say the number one way to have a runner stop seeing you is to tell them to stop running. So if you have a more liberal definition of what a running injury is, and you're saying, listen, it's just, it's when you're limiting your participation to a degree, you should admit that you're injured at that point. And that means that you have to start doing something about it. And it doesn't have to be a whole lot of effort. It's that whole uh, ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And it really is. When we teach in our courses, we teach minimum effective dosage. We tell people how to prescribe one or two exercises that is going to address the pain that is limiting their participation in running instead of saying, here, I want you to do 25 different exercises and you're not going to have time to run with this because you're just going to be doing stretches and exercises. That's not the point. The point of this is saying admitting earlier that you're injured and then seeking some input or advice on how to prevent it from becoming bigger or get rid of it altogether is a really important step. So I think that that's something that the running community should look to refine and see if we can be more inclusive of what running injuries are so that the running injuries aren't as impactful. Now, we have an idea of what an injury is. Let's jump into why these happen. I'm basically a huge science nerd, so I'm going to share my uh, favorite definition from a Bertelsen article in 2017. Here, for those of you watching the video, I've got this up here. 
And this is the most wordy slide I ever put in one of my courses, but I'll even read straight from this. And this article summed it up really well. And I like the verbiage that they use. They say, we hypothesize the injury occurred as a result of the runner possessing multiple risk factors and then participating in running under certain circumstances to a degree where the structure's load capacity was exceeded. That's a mouthful, I'm sure, if you're not very science-oriented and not in the literature aspect of it, but it really is true. And just to put it a little more simply, basically runners have a certain cumulative stress coming into a run. And then if they run far enough or fast enough, something's gonna break down and they're gonna get injured. And I think that that is very basically why running injuries happen. Yeah, I so I really like that. And I use I like using analogies and stories. So early in my career, I used a car analogy for running injuries. Each car can drive a certain distance based on its capabilities and design. And when you drive your car, it has a certain amount of cumulative wear and tear from driving it. I mean, we when you talk about your car and how old it is, often you say how many miles do you have on your car? We don't always do that in running, but we probably should have something. And we'll talk about this in later episodes when we talk about training load and lots of other fun things as those episodes come out. But we have a cumulative stress. And if you drive too far or too fast, that car breaks down. And the same thing with running. Your body has a certain capacity at the start of every run, and that capacity goes down as you continue to run. And if the stress on the body is too much, you get injured. I use the term stress and load interchangeably, by the way. So if you hear me use the term stress and training load or load, I'm oftentimes speaking about the same thing here. And I've what I've done is I've dedicated my career to running and I've worked with a range of athletes from first time runners to multiple world champions. And I've advanced a little bit how I think about running injuries and the basic overview with the car analogy we just talked about is absolutely true. Um, but it's only admittedly marginally useful to understand that because how do we quantify that? How do we quantify and how do you identify the cumulative stress on the body? And how can you quantify who can handle what stress during what run? I think that's some of the struggles that we have in running. And I always joke that running is maybe the world's oldest sport. I guess some could argue wrestling. Uh, people started wrestling or people started running and racing each other very, very early on. But we still have a lot to learn about running. And that's one of the things I love about it. And I'm so passionate because I learn something about running every single day, whether it's from my own running, from treating others, from teaching courses, from designing technology. It's it's all learning and that's really a fun aspect of it here but that offers challenges and i fully acknowledge that that that's what makes running complex and there's this perceived simplicity of running that you can just put your shoes on and go for a run and that everything will be fine oh i just ran for 30 minutes well did you run on hills did you run fast did you run easy was it hot was it cold did you sleep well the night before do you have life stress all of these things will contribute to whether that was a successful run or not, or whether you were contributing to some type of injury here. So I think we really have to get more specific and understand at an individual level why that runner sitting in front of me or sitting in front of any physical therapist, athletic trainer, physician, why they got injured. So what I've talked about and, and what we've done at Run DNA is really start to think about developing what we call the running injury profile. And each runner has this really unique reason and subset of why they got injured. And this graphic on here, uh, we'll link to it in show notes for podcast, or if you're watching the, the video version, you can see it up on the screen. But it's pretty encompassing of why people get injured in the first place. And we look at this and on this, just to kind of read it for those people that aren't able to view it here, we talk about movement capabilities, things like your flexibility and strength. We talk about your running form, something I'm very passionate about that's an important part of the puzzle that I think few people are actually focusing on. But we also talk about other things like your equipment and the environment. So your shoes, or is it hilly? Are you on a pavement surface or are you on grass? We talk about your training load. This is something that's huge. Our endurance running coaching course, we talk a ton about training load and quantifying it. 
I think you, if you want to be a billionaire, you could find a way to really accurately define the load that a runner experiences. And we're getting better with this with wearable technology, but we'll have lots of other episodes on that, not to go into too much of a soapbox. But even in this running injury profile, we're talking about your well being, your mental health, your nutrition, your sleep. Um, just general health factors. If you have comorbidities or you're having things like diabetes, we have lots of runners that are uh, diabetic that are still high level runners, but that has an effect on their profile and what contributes to their injuries and their performance. So each runner has these unique attributes, experiences, and they have this unique profile. And what we really try to do is think about how we can define what that is and how we can get people to understand how to get healthy. Um, runners aren't always the best at taking some of the advice that they would give other other runners. Um, so, you know, don't be afraid to get help from somebody who knows this model. We've trained over 10,000 professionals in how to work with runners. And we have a locator on our website that you can find somebody near you if you're looking for help with this. Because it's very easy to understand the concepts of this, but it's much harder to be able to apply it to yourself. Even myself, I've, I'm just coming over. If you followed me on social media, you saw back early in the summer, I was dealing with a patellar tendon partial tear. And then you'll see that now I've been dealing with some hip pain. And even myself, I need other people to help me out. And we need uh, advice from medical professionals, coaches. I work with some of the top athletes in the world and guess what? They all have coaches. So why do we think as recreational runners, we don't need coaches. We need people that can look at the big picture and help us out. And that's really important here. So you can go to rundna.com to find that specialist or even sign up to become a specialist if you want to be one of those people and learn more ways to do that here. Um, but that's an important part that don't worry if that seems intimidating. Well, how do I control all those things? Lots of times a little bit goes a long way. So one of my favorite studies talks about how if you can reduce the stress of each step when you run by 10%, you can run twice as far before your body breaks down. That's not hard to do. 10% is actually pretty easy to reduce, but it's knowing how to get that 10% and not trying to get 70% by doing too many things. You need guidance. You need somebody that can help you out with that and that understands that you're not just going to go in there and say, I have shin pain and here's a sheet. Okay. You've got shin pain. Here's 10 exercises to do. Good luck. See you later. That's not getting the personalization that you need. And that's what I really encourage the running specialists, the medical and fitness professionals that work with runners is take your skills to the next level and really be able to personalize it. And for runners, really look for somebody that is providing that personalization and a runner your job is to figure out what is your formula to keep you healthy and how could you figure that out how can you be able to understand what your injury profile is and how to move forward so that you know those 10 percent of things that you can do that are going to keep you healthy so we're not going to go through each of those uh, basic elements that makes up the injury profile here, um, but that's the core of what this whole Run DNA podcast is going to be about. How can we provide you additional movement capabilities? How can we focus on running form? How do we understand training load? Um, what do shoes impact it? How can we be just more overall well and healthy. Um, so if these topics are interesting to you and you wanna learn more, please definitely subscribe, tell all your friends, uh, listen back in. But I just want to say that running injuries are part of the sport and that's okay. And if we admit we have them and we're willing to understand why they happen in the first place and what we can do individually, those running injuries aren't gonna be as big a deal. They're not gonna last as long. They're not gonna stop you from participating for long. And that's what we're really looking to do. I don't think we can really prevent all injuries. I'll be the first to admit that. I like from Peter Atiyah's book, Outlive, I think is uh, the title of that book there. He says we take a proactive approach to it. And I think that that is much more obtainable 
is that the running community should take a proactive approach to injuries and not just wait for one to happen and sideline you, but get ahead of it, get a gait analysis, work with a running professional, learn what to do, get a training program, work with a coach, do the things because the sport offers so much. And like we said in the beginning, if you bottled everything up, all the benefits of running, everyone would take that pill and it would solve so many of the world's issues, mental health, physical health, emotional, everything would be significantly better. Maybe not solve, but definitely help. So we want to participate in a running and we want to take control over running injuries. And that's what we're really about. And that does lead to performance. So if you've not been injured and you're just looking for performance too, this is the same type of strategy here. So before we wrap up, um, I'll give you a couple quick tangible things to put in action uh, and give you some, but that's the, the meat of it. But I want to give you some quick things that you can share with your friends or some things that you can do here. So a couple pro tips, we'll say. So pro tip number one, all load or stress is created equal. Now, I'll give you a story about this uh, personally, just recently. I track on the Run DNA app, we use something called acute to chronic workload ratios and session RPE, more about that later. But basically, it's the way that we quantify training load and the way we say how much stress can our body handle. So I recently had an international trip and I actually recorded walking through the airport carrying a uh, luggage as a workout. Now, um, the real story is actually that we landed at JFK airport and we had to make at 3.30 and we had to make a five o'clock train to get back to Delaware. And uh, we had to get out of the taxi and I had to run for a half mile carrying my luggage and my suitcase. And we made the train by like two minutes there. So I include that as a workout. And so that's important to understand that a lot of times runners are looking at just the running and thinking, why did I get injured? I didn't increase my running that much. But what if you increase something else? What if you're having life stress? What if you broke up with a significant other? Or what if you've been stress eating? Or what if, and you put on a little weight? Or what if uh, you've had some uh, po even positive things? You're moving, okay? So you move to your dream home and you're so excited, and you're happy and you're not sleeping and your routines are off and you're moving things. You have to consider all stress is created equal and we can't just look at running in isolation and think that if we just keep the running the same, that we'll be fine and we're not going to get other injuries. So I think that that's an important concept that people should take into consideration and start thinking about that when they go for the next run. And this is a big reason we use effort-based training. Again, more on that in future efforts, efforts there. Um, and load management along those same lines comes in many forms, right? We can increase our capacity. So this is why we're big advocates of strength training. If you want to handle more stress, one way is you can increase your capacity. There's a term called envelope of function. And that basically means that you have a certain ability. Imagine that you've got one of those manila envelopes, one of the big ones here that you put like a full sheet of paper in, and you can stuff a certain amount of activity into that envelope. But when you do too much, you're going to tear it at the seams or it's gonna overspill. What we can do is stop putting so much in and make it manageable that that envelope can hold what you're doing, or you can get a bigger envelope. And the answer is not either or, but it's really doing both here. You can look at increasing your capacity, reducing the exposure. You can look at reducing stress in other areas of your life. You can look at improving your form. There's lots of different things that you can do. Just if even if we go back to the car analogy that I used a lot early in my career, uh, if you have you can increase your shocks for the car and that could be doing jump training or strength training. You can change the tires getting new shoes, helping you out there. There's lots of things that we can do to help you out. But at a basic level, what we're just summarizing here is running injuries occur because the stress is greater than the capacity. And understanding which element of your running injury profile led to the injury can make a huge difference in getting and staying healthy. So the good news is that even a slight reduction can make a big impact 
And that's what we're here for. And we hope that we can share along this journey together and we can all learn from each other and enjoy running to its maximum capability. So thanks for being here. I do really appreciate it. I, we really want to hear from you. This is something that is meant for you. So please leave some comments, reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. And thanks for joining us for this first episode. Like what you hear? Leave a review of the show wherever you listen. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Run DNA helps runners and running specialists through education and technology to identify each runner's unique injury profile to avoid setbacks and maximize results. The Run DNA podcast is produced by Ace Running LLC. The Run DNA podcast is intended for educational purposes only. No clinical decision making should be based solely on one source. While care is taken to ensure accuracy, factual errors can occur. Always seek the guidance of qualified medical professionals before making healthcare decisions. Find us online at rundna.com.